now for a test of the uh, Slash Arc 160 dual voltage welder. Uh, you can see that it comes with the standard uh, welder plug. I have the adapter for it to uh, connect it to the uh, 240 side of the generator. And this goes to show you that, yeah, they pretty much uh, clipped off the zip ties on this. Uh, the 120 volt adapter, that thing is a hunk of junk. It, it is so plasticky. Uh, it was so plasticky, you could hear it kind of crackling like plastic. Yeah, so I'm not going to use this unless I have to. So I'm going to get this welder set up and see if it runs off of this generator because it's supposed to have clean power but you know these welders aren't supposed to uh even power up if the if the electrical signal is too dirty so we'll see how this one goes
uh, keep in mind these are my first uh, 6011 welds. Now I kind of I can't remember which order. This was uh, done first, and I think I did this one. I just could not get an arc going here. It seemed like uh, once I had a shorter rod, it would work. I could get it to burn really better because it wasn't all jittery and jumpy. It's more stable. But I got a good burn on this one here. Uh, I could keep it going good there. Uh, here, I was just learning how to feed it into the puddle. And uh, once I get the travel speed right and the feed rate right, you know, I, I could probably almost get a stack of get a stack of dimes going. This was that last final run here with a short rod that was burnt off. That weld looks really good. You know, it was, it was like uh, I was starting to really get it going here. That was with a Hobart 6011 three thirty seconds rod at 75 amps. It was this weld and. Well, these three welds, I think we're on a, we're on 75 amps. And this one was at 80 amps. I tried doing 70 and it just wasn't going, so I turned it up to six, turned it up to, back to 75 in between. Here are the welds. Let's see if this. This is the first one uh, at a uh, hundred amps, and I just was going so slow here with the feed rate, or with the travel speed, it just wasn't going. I turned it up to a hundred amps, 
and you know, 110 amps and it got a more consistent uh arc and i got the travel speed down once i figured it out okay keep it burn the faster i can move it you know the better weld i could get uh i basically traveled at least twice as fast i got you know twice the weld out of it uh the same rod eighth inch holbert holbert 6011 uh, eighth inch rods yeah, I turned it up to 110, and it worked a lot better for me. And you, you can see the uh, ripples in it. That's where it was like, kind of arc was kind of starting and stopping. And as I was, this, remember, these are my first uh, 611 eighth inch rod welds ever. First time ever running 7018. Uh, this one is set for 3 3rd seconds rod right at 100 amps. Had a little problem getting going, but once I got going, it was easy to run. I uh, figured it out. You have to keep a longer arc length then for a 6011, at least for me. And you can see it produces a pretty decent bead. Tiny ripples, it just kept going. I ran out of uh, space here and a uh, rod this one had a problem getting it going uh this says 7018 has horrible restrikes these hobarts were uh restriking really well uh, when i did get it going again i had some issues here and once i got it going again i got a good steady feed and the bead turned out really nice now uh, for my welding ability the 7018 Seems to be working out better for me than the 6011. Uh, but yeah, 7018 is going to be the way to go for stick welding for me. Besides, it produces uh, much better welds. It's uh, more ductile, so it can take a better shock than any other basically welding rods. Most welding shops only run 7018 and 6010, 6011. The difference between 6010 and 6011 is that... The 6011 is an AC rod, and inverter machines like this one usually have a problem running a 6010 unless they have a special mode for it. So, I'm going to break out the 8th inch 7018 and give her, give her a good run with that, see how well that works. In the interest of saving time, I did not film the Hobart 7018 8th inch rod at 125 amps uh, this is the first well that couldn't get the bead going very good at first this is where it started i just couldn't keep it go lit so i just switched a rod so i could get a good initial uh, strike and i did really good up till about here i had a hiccup uh, a restrike and it relit right away because i lost the uh the gap I, I had too much of an arc length and it, and it goes out I noticed that with 7018. Same thing with 6011. 6011, you need a really short arc length. Uh, I got to practice on those to make nice looking welds. As long as I can run 7018 with beads looking this good, I'm just going to run 7018 pretty much for everything, unless I got to do really crusty painted metal. Which uh, this is, by the way, this is pretty rusty metal. This is as dark as the picture shows. Now it's pretty rusty. I was still able to to get down a good bead so these are the 330 seconds 7018 I uh, did a nice looking bead I could do better uh, maybe I need to run it a little bit hotter but these uh, eighth inch rods are running run for me being a true amateur or running really good so what do I really think of this uh, stick welder as if you haven't figured it out by now for $139.99 shipped to my door, dual voltage, uh, it is really good. I'm not going to run this thing on anything less than $240. Uh, why? Because there's an issue I found when I went to start it up. I put it 
on the uh, 110 cord. It went to 160 amps. It's not supposed to go that high. At most, it should be going to 120. So if you use this welder on 110, do not go past 120 if you have a solid 25 amp outlet. Uh, at minimum 20. Uh, if you can get a 25 uh, amp on 110, that would be better. Um, yeah. For $139.99, the cheapest dual voltage stick welder on Amazon works very, very well. I don't have any uh, 530 seconds rods to they crank it up all the way. I don't think the generator can handle it, so I'm not going to push it. So eighth inch is the absolute limit I'm going to run on this thing, uh, mainly because of the power source. I don't want to blow up, burn up the generator, but yeah. $139.99, it is an in my opinion, excellent welder for beginners. It does a good bead. Uh, it, I heard 7018 have has horrible restrikes. Uh, it could be a bit temperamental, but if you relight it immediately, like off of the puddle, or you can uh, do um, touch the metal elsewhere, then drag it back to where you're welding, kind of like you know, kind of like just skimming across the metal and keep the arc kind of sputtering until you get back to where you were welding. Then it'll work. Yeah, um, I'm just learn. I learned a lot today on running this welder, so I'm definitely giving it a thumbs up. You know, for as cheap as it is, it works really well, and I'll have a link to the where I got it from on Amazon in the video's description below.